Hi everyone. It's not the thought or content of Zechariah's text that's difficult to understand. It's difficult because the current text is a state of being mixed, revised several times, and cannot be understood consistently. So, inevitably, the commentator of Zechariah has to make uh, his own judgment <laughs> and make uh, his own choice uh, and uh, have to reconstruct the text and interpret, interpret it in the context he understands. Today's text, Zechariah chapter 6 verses uh, 9 to 15, is also a complicated state of editing. So it's not easy to find. First, the person's name. Uh, the person's name, the people in verse 10 and the people in verse 14 seem similar, but their names are wrong. There are parts in the main text that don't fit well in terms of continuity with the preceding chapters, as well as the person or number uh, is not Rajka. It's like holding an envelope uh, full of apples uh, in your chest and when one falls and uh, pick it up and another one falls uh, while you pick it up. Yeah, uh, I don't think the Zechariah text can be completely understood with a smooth, error-free reconstruction. Also, I don't think such a perfect understanding is very important in prophetic literature. Uh, in prophetic literature, there is no perfect understanding. Prophetic literature presupposes, presupposes a variety of understanding. Uh, prophecy is the same prophecy, but the understanding varies depending on the time, the place, audience, when the prophecy is proclaimed. Therefore, it's the right attitude towards prophetic literature to treat the text by finding the parts we can understand from the text and focusing on their meanings rather than fully grasping the text completely. Therefore, even when reading the entire book of Zechariah, I'm in a position to recommend recommend, uh, we find meanings. We can fill and weave them together uh, with appropriate themes rather than fully understanding them. First of all, the uh, content of today's text is as follows. Uh, in Zechariah uh, 6, 9, God commands uh, the prophet to act. A prophet also uh, prophesies through actions, first through words, and second through actions. Uh, we can see Ezekiel or Jeremiah, etc., uh, through prophet uh, 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 proclaims through his action that God has commanded. This is called sign act. Sign act. Sinek will be explained in, in detail uh, when you deal with Zechariah chapter 11. Uh, there is a message God wants to give to this sign act. First of all, what God commanded Zechariah to do is Zechariah chapter 6, verses 10 to 11. Uh, Heltai, uh, Tobiah, and Judea, 
uh, are in the house of the man named Joshua, son of Zephaniah. A very hard uh, announce, uh, pronounce. Uh, who returned from Babel. The prophet goes to the house, receives silver and gold from the man, and make a crown out of it. Then the crown was placed on the high priest Joshua. Uh, in the ancient world, um, it's said that uh, not only kings wore crowns, but uh, queens and vassals as well. Uh, the crowning of high priest Joshua uh, shows that uh, Joshua was recognized as a very noble and important person anyway. Then, again, in Zechariah chapter 6, uh, verses 12 to 13, the prophet says uh, that the branch, uh, we know branch, um, uh, branch uh, in, uh, already foretold in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8, that branch, that branch sprout, would appear. The branch, we have already know, known, um, the branch is the political leader of the Davidic family. As I have said many times, it says that sprout will rebuild the temple and rule the country. At the time, um, Joshua, the high priest, will also fulfill his role in his place. And a very important statement follows. There will be a consultation of peace between Sprout, between the branch, and the high priest Joshua. There will be a consultation of peace. Uh, the Hebrew word shalom is used. Uh, we know the shalom uh, as uh, meaning peace, but shalom is also widely used to mean harmony. Shalom has very multiple meanings, uh, such as peace, harmony, perfection, farming, etc. Uh, later in Zechariah chapter 8, uh, you will see the word shalom used in many different senses. So today's text, uh, the NIV is translated as, and there will be harmony between the two, between the two, Joshua and uh, the branch. Uh, what the prophet is trying to emphasize in the text is that Joshua, the high priest who has just been crowned, and the soon-to-be Davidic political leader, the branch, lead the reconstruction work in harmony with uh, the high priest Joshua in the future. Then the emphasis uh, uh, in the text is uh, on Joshua uh, wearing the crown, the branch, um, the work of reconstruction, and shalom. Uh, these words are uh, emphasized in today's text. High priest Joshua, uh, the branch, uh, the work of reconstruction, and shalom, uh, harmony. The first thing I need to explain is Joshua, who was uh, given the crown. We don't know the exact story, but uh, wearing a crown means that uh, you are, uh, he is, was a noble, noble being. Perhaps it means Joshua, religious leader, had a stronger influence than a politician in the era of the exile. However, shalom, peace, shalom, harmony, with the political lead, leader, the branch, is emphasized here. We saw, we said earlier that uh, two kinds of uh, leadership are needed to lead the community, a political and a religious leader. Leaders must be just like two wheels of the chariots. In any community, if the community is operated under the leadership of one person, you realize how insecure it is to be a leader uh, when a difficult and difficult situation comes to the community. Even though uh, it seems comfortable in normal times. The political office and the priestly office must work 
together as one. Never go separately. It's biblical. High priest, political leader should exist together. The high priest, high priest Joshua wore a crown. So should Joshua's leadership surpass that of political leader? It's not like that. Even if a religious leader wears a crown, a community can survive only when it is in harmony, it is in shalom with the political leader who leads the community. Although it seems that Zerubbabel's influence was weak, uh, Haggai and Zechariah, uh, who speak of, uh, proclaimed of the era of the exile, uh, emphasized harmonious leadership that Zerubbabel, Joshua will lead. When Haggai is always speaking to the audience in the text, uh, the words of the prophets came to Zerubbabel, came to governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, and came to Joshua, the high priest, and came to the people. And also, when the audience listened to the words of the prophet and put them into practice, Zerubbabel and Joshua and the people all were moved. In Haggai uh, chapter 1, verse 12 and verse uh, 14, we can check. Uh, even if you look at the world, when someone wears a crown uh, under a certain title, uh, they try to stand out more and gain more influence over uh, their fellow officers. The same can be seen in the church community. In some cases, clergymen uh, seeks to lead entire church exclusively. And in others, they are exposed to the temptation to exert more influence among those in office. This phenomenon is thought to be common to all communities where people gather. To this very community, God speaks the harmony, the shalom, through the mouth of Prophet Zechariah. There's one more important point considered in today's text. Uh, that's uh, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 15. Here, God says that those who are very far away will build the house of Yahweh. The people very far away will build the temple. I hope you all possess the meaning of these words today. The rebuilding of the temple uh, is the most important event in the time of the prophet Zechariah. Also, the word, temp uh, the word temple reconstruction includes not only the building of the temple, but all the work of rebuilding that begins again. All the work of uh, restarting. It is saying that <coughs> people from away, afar, will be the main pillars of this important, precious, and rewarding ministry. The word, those who are very far away, <coughs> means uh, outsider, not mainstream. It means that you are an unexpected third person, not the person that others easily expect. God's work doesn't always take place through the mainstream as uh, 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 ex expected. Among the people named uh, so many cases, so many examples, uh, you know, the Esau and Jacob. Jacob took an important place in God's work than Esau. Who was Esau, Esau who was more handsome, more, had more strength than uh, Jacob. The King David, uh, who was a shepherd in the field, is anointed king over many of Jesus' handsome and capable sons. The gospel of Christianity was led by the Jews in Jerusalem as well as the beginning, but after the apostle Paul it spread to all the nations. So many Gentiles 
had never seen Jesus were murdered in the name of Jesus and spread the gospel widely. It's the miracle, it's the main miracle of Christianity, main miracle of God's work. So Goliath also emphasizes uh, this man from afar, man from away. Uh, most importantly, the history of reconstruction will be driven by people far away. So, uh, we may uh, think, who are those who were far away? First of all, uh, we can say uh, foreigners and strangers. I know the uh, group sound, foreigner. <laughs> uh, their song very uh, difficult. Uh, foreigner or strangers. Um, we know the, the old ancient Jews, uh, the ancient Jews, the Jews of ancient times looked down on the Gentiles. They didn't know, uh, didn't uh, even consider a foreigner and a mixed blood man uh, to be a human. Uh, they even prayed to thank God uh, that they were not strange, they were not Gentiles. Such narrow-minded racism is absolutely not biblical. The Bible is a book of future-oriented ideas with the word global these days. Uh, global is also a main issue of the Bible. It's the Bible that uh, values all the people in the world and emphasizes that all are one. Uh, especially Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 28, and so uh, many other uh, phrases in Old Testament. God is the uh, whole world God. Uh, God values all the people in the world. Uh, the mayor couple, uh, professors uh, mayor, uh, consider the distant people uh, to be uh, Yahweh's, uh, uh, who didn't live in Palestine. Uh, in other words, non-Jews who serve God and other races are included. This means that God's true work transcends races. Second, I think it refers uh, to a person who is a Jew but has returned from captivity in Babylon. These are the people who went north, as already emphasized in Zechariah 6 8. I think that the people who returned from 70 years of captivity not those who remained on the mainland Palestine, uh, will lead the Reconstruction Society. In fact, uh, during the age of uh, Reconstruction, uh, there was a struggle for leadership between the Israelites living in the mainland of Palestine and the Jews returning from Babylon, as described in Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, we, can check, we can check in Ezra and Nehemiah. A uh, scholar uh, Boda uh, sees uh, it as a message of hope. The rebuilding community will continue to receive an influx of agents from outside the community. Influx of so many persons. I'd like to think that uh, people who have the image uh, of uh, the remnant, I like the word remnant, a remnant also is uh, also uh, belongs to the people, those who were uh, uh, far away. I think a remnant who kept uh, kept their faith in all the difficult circumstances. Uh, they are remnant, and they are the people from uh, uh, far away, regardless of whether they came from captivity, or live in the mainland. Regardless of who is far away, the common message is the eternal meaning. 
it gives to all of us in need, namely the latter, not the former. The thought of the Bible places more weight on those who are the last than those who are the first. It's not that uh, God is partial. Uh, the great idea of the Bible is that God uses the needy, God awakens the late to become a protagonist in God's amazing work. It's the man from afar. Uh, we too must always confess that we are far away. We must humbly tell God we are the last. I pray that God will use us, use me, to become all, you, uh, all the heroes of God's miracles who can take on beautiful roles in short but precious things. Yeah, uh, let me tell you the prayer topics to share today. Number one, oh God, uh, make me a person of shalom, a person of harmony. No matter when and where you are, uh, do not go beyond your limits. Help me become a being that can achieve good by harmonizing with other beings. Number two, confess today that God entrusts wonderful work to the people who are far away. May the Lord teach, awaken me in spite of my shortcomings and later so that I may become a Christian who is used beautifully for God's work and God's important work. Today's story ends here. Thank you. Shalom.